This is the second video for the YamahaSynth.com article series, Manny's Expert Examples. And we're going to continue uh, what we started talking about in video one, which is how we're going to be filling the holes in our harmonic spectrum in our uh, harmonic component modeled piano. In the first video, I showed how we used parts one, five, seven, and eight to create our basic piano timbre and some of the uh, attack stuff of the hammers and the acoustic eccentricities of the harmonics. And in this video, I'm going to show how I'm using our remaining four parts to fill in the holes in our harmonic spectrum to give us a much more full, warm, and accurate piano timbre. I'm going to go to scene six to bring up parts two, three, and four in isolation. And what these parts are doing together is adding the missing harmonics that are for the bottom range of our piano. What they sound like together is this. So you can see I am using them to create a lot of the very, very high harmonics in the lowest registers, as well as filling in our middle harmonics in the, uh, oh, the octave between C2 and C3. Now let's go into edit mode and see how each of these individual parts are contributing to that result. I'm going to bring up uh, part two first. So um, we're using our algorithm here that we have from before, which is algorithm 25. And this is to uh, add a lot of warmth in the middle harmonics of our piano. So uh, in isolation, it sounds like this. And if you go to the effects, you'll see I've got the uh, phaser effect going here. I use this to accentuate the timbre of certain areas of those mid-range harmonics. So we'll go into the parameters for that. And as I said in the article, this is a you know time-based delay effect, and so it's going to create uh, phase cancellations in the waveform and make it sound different. And that's by using this manual parameter. So I'm using this effect to dial in the emphasis so that when it blends back in with our uh, basic piano timbre from part one, it starts warming up the sound. In addition, we've got some detuning going on here as well so that we have uh, some beating going on between the harmonics from part two compared to part one. Now we'll go over to part three and let's take a look here. And now we're back to our algorithm 67 where I'm using all these two op stacks. So this part is creating some of the very, very high harmonics in the low bass register notes. And part four is doing something very similar. In addition to adding that additional high harmonic content, if you look at the effects settings here, again, I am using uh, the phaser in part four. I'm using the chorus in part three. So the reason why I'm using the chorus, again, is to give us various character of beating and motion in those high harmonics. And the phaser I'm using, again, as a uh, timbre modifier. So again, let's hear what we got going on here with part four in the phaser. So I'm using the phaser effect as a tonal shaper in parts two and four. So then when I blend them all back together with uh, the rest of our parts in our sound, we filled out the uh, mid middle harmonics of uh, the piano tone. Now let's go over to part five. Uh, part five is basically doing this same effect for the upper registered notes above uh, F3. So in isolation, it sounds like this. Now you'll notice 
Again, we've got our algorithm 67. We have all these two op groups. Uh, for the effects processing on here, I'm using our chorus. Uh, and again, this is to create a fill-out timbre to match our part 5 basic timbre. So here's part 5 again. Here's part 6. And then combined. So you can hear how part 6 fills out the sound, gives us some beating of the multiple strings per note, and warms it up quite a bit by filling in again the missing harmonics. So this is the fundamental concept of harmonic component modeling, where we use operators within each part to add another component of our sound. In the article, I also mentioned how we utilize the part EQ uh, to help really dial in our sound without having to mess around with the FM parameters so that we don't have to deal with all the weird quirky behaviors. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the EQ settings we're using for our parts here. Uh, this is the EQ for uh, part 6. That's part 7. That's part 8. You can see I'm using a lot of um, very narrow band parametric to get some of the format behaviors. Uh, here's part 5. Here's part 4. That's part 3. I don't think I have anything going on on 2 and 1. Let's see what we got in this EQ here. So most importantly, on our uh, two-band EQ here, I'm using a lot of uh, format style settings to bring out particular registers of these timbres. And again, this reinforces that part of the sound without having to change our modulator output level or other things that might mess up our harmonic uh, intensities uh, dynamically across uh, the keyboard or as we start playing with higher and lower velocities. All right, so we're back to our whole sound. That's something I have set up on the audition. And again, so let's just review everything that we've got going on here. So. Um, scene two, again, is our bass piano timbre with just parts one and five for our basic timbre below uh, E3 and above F3. Scene three is part seven in isolation, with a, which is the additional harmonic content in the initial attack for the high velocities plus a lot of stuff for key thunk. Part 8 is additional key thunk up high. And of course, the beginning of our additional harmonic content for the low bass registers. Scene 5 is all those parts put together, leaving out these fill-in parts. It's sounding pretty good, but it's not quite as warm and full as it needs to be. So we fix that by utilizing parts 2, 3, 4, and 6. So the 2, 3, and 4 parts are filling in the timbre for the lower registers. And part 6 is doing the same for the upper register. Now in scene eight, I've got all the extras and I have the basic timbre removed. So we've got parts one and five muted. And so this is just all our extra stuff, all our extra harmonics and all our extra fill in. And of course, our full sound. That's piano example one and the breakdown on how we created it using this concept of harmonic component modeling. I hope you've enjoyed this second video, and in the next article and video, we'll be deep diving into phase, specifically the phase of harmonics and the phase phenomenon that are inherent in FM synthesis. So I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to read the article on yamahasynth.com, 
And until next time, remember, dive in, play with the parameters, change your tuning ratios, and what else? Oh, something a little sneaky. Super knob. It's mapped to some FM parameters. We'll get to that much later in the series, but listen to what it does. Sneaky preview. See you guys later.